Section 9.2, testing the population proportion P. So we're going to finally do hypothesis tests in this section. So we need a few definitions, and then we'll jump into an example. So the significance level, which sometimes we call alpha, that little fish-like letter, um, is the mass maximum risk we're willing to take of making a type 1 error. So it's like our risk of a type 1 error. And it is the percentage of true claims that we are willing to reject in the long run. So just like confidence intervals, like a 95% confident, we were just wrong 5% of the time, even though we didn't know it. Same thing here. If alpha is 0.05, um, we might reject 5% of the time when we shouldn't have. Um, and we'll get into that later. This is also the cutoff that we will use um, when we are trying to decide if the difference between our sample data and HO are just due to random variation. So this is our risk for type 1 error. But why are we willing to make any type of type 1 error? Um, because the more we decrease our risk of type 1 error, the more we increase our risk of making a type 2 error. So you're going to make some errors sometimes because statistics is just not 100%, right? There's just bad samples sometimes. So if we lo um, lower our risk of type 1, then type 2s are more common and vice versa. Um, so deciding on an alpha level will depend on if type 2 or type, type 1 or type 2 error is worse. So we use smaller alphas when type 1 is worse, and we'll use slightly larger alphas when type 2 is worse. And that really depends on the situation. So I'm just going to immediately do an example and then explain the process. Um, it's just one of those things you kind of have to see it, maybe not fully understand it, and then we'll talk about all the steps. So step one is going to be to do a setup, which I'm going to do while we read the question. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to find the hypothesis, and we're going to find the alpha level as we read what's going on, and then we'll do a hypothesis test. So egg farmers try to find and remove all the cracked eggs from processing line before they are packaged and shipped. Um, however, human testers are only able to detect about 85.8% of the cracked eggs. So sometimes there's cracked eggs in cartons. I'm sure we've seen this at a grocery store. Um, so one egg company considers it acceptable if no more than 4% of the eggs in the carton are cracked. As part of quality control process, they choose and tested 288 eggs. So this sounds like a sample to me. Quality control would be a sample. Ready to be shipped, and the sample had 21 cracked eggs. So there's a lot of information. We'll take it piece by piece. But let's see, what's the hypothesis? So does the data provide enough evidence at 10% significance? So that's my alpha in decimal form. We'll say alpha is 0.10, that's going to be step two to show that the testers are currently allowing, so this here's my hypothesis, an unacceptable proportion of cracked eggs into the cartons. So we're in proportion land, no means. So I know that my hypothesis will have P and P. And then what would be considered unacceptable? So no more than four is acceptable, so more than four would be unacceptable. So that'll be my H1. We're trying to prove that they're allowing too many cracked eggs, and then our null will always just be equal to that same number of 0.04. All right, so then just like a science class or an English class, we're going to go ahead and investigate. So the setup is like our introduction. So to investigate, we're going to calculate some statistics from the sample. So what do we know from the sample? We know N is 288. That's all of the eggs. And we know that 21 of them were cracked, so p hat, because that's my sample, will be 21 out of the 288, which gives me 0 0.0729, 21 divided by 288. Um, and so we're going to find a z-score. So I'm going to do this new formula for a z-score. Since we don't really have a mean or standard deviation, we have a special z-score for this. So it's going to be p hat minus p0. So p0 is the one from the hypothesis. So that'll be 0.04. And then divided by this new formula that 
represents standard deviation, but we don't need to find it. So it'll be square root of p0 times 1 minus p0 over n. So we will do the sample value 0729 minus 04 all over this really ugly square root 04, 1 minus 0.04 all over 288. And if we add parentheses, we can do everything at once. So I put parentheses on the numerator, parentheses 0 0.0729 minus 0.04 parentheses, divided by square root, and then just make sure all of those numbers are in the square root, 0 0.04, 1 minus 0 0.04, divided by 288. And notice that square root bar is over all those numbers. And I have a syntax error. Oh. Syntax error just means you type something that doesn't make sense. I accidentally typed a decimal instead of two. And I get a z-score of 2.849. So this is probably strong evidence because it's more than two standard deviations. But the hypothesis test is actually going to go a little farther and measure the risk. So it's probably strong evidence, again, because of that z-score. But now we're going to measure risk. And that's this new thing called the p-value. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the normal curve. We're going to label the z-score at 2.849. And then since we're doing a right-tailed test for greater than, we're going to shade to the right and find the area. And that's the p-value. So p-value is the area. And in case we don't remember, that's normal CDF for area. Lower is 2.849. Up to infinity is my upper, or 10 to the 99. So second distribution, go down to normal CDF, 2.849 comma 10 to the 99. And we get this small decimal, 0 0.0022. So the idea here is saying that if 4% of eggs are cracked. And that's coming from the H0. So if H0 is true, there's really only a 0.22% chance this would happen randomly. Which means it's probably not random and it means it probably isn't equal to 0.4. And so that's where our conclusion is, is we're going to reject. Because it's very unlikely that it's random, which means it's very unlikely that it's actually 4%. So we reject HO, which means we're rejecting that P equals 0.04. And by rejecting that, we're saying that, hey, actually they are letting in too many cracked eggs. So we'll write that in everyday language. We conclude There is an acceptable, unacceptable amount of cracked eggs. I think we use the word proportion of cracked eggs. So we're basically saying it, we're rejecting that it equals 0.04, so it must be greater than 0.04, which is unacceptable. So rejecting means we're saying, hey, this first one is not true, so the second one must be true. And that's a hypothesis test. We will definitely like go through all the details of this um, and make sense of it, but it just helps to see an example. So let's comment on the requirements. Since it's proportions, it's going to be that same n, p, n, q, greater than or equal to 10. Um, we have two different p's. We have the sample and the hypothesis. We're going to use the hypothesis value. So the 0.04. So we'll do 288 times 0.04, and then Q would be 288 times 1 minus 0.04. So go ahead and calculate those and make sure they're both at least 10. So I get 11.52 and 276.48, greater than or equal to 10, so requirements are met. Same requirements we've been talking about. Um, and then let's suppose your current shipment was taken from a sample um, of 180,000 eggs altogether. What would you recommend the company do? 
So we concluded that they're sending too many cracked eggs. So we probably shouldn't send this shipment out. So we probably should cancel this shipment. Uh, maybe we would take another sample just to make sure it's not random. I mean, maybe we just really did get a really bad sample, um, but we should cancel the shipment and investigate. So statistics tells me that there's too many cracked eggs, but maybe not why. So maybe they should investigate why there's so many. So let's just finish up these definitions. So step three, I labeled it step three. That's called the test stat. Um, it'll be a value obtained from the sample that is used to determine the strength of our claim. So stuff we talked about in section 9.1. For now, it's the z-score. So the z-score is step three. Step four is that new thing called the p-value. This is the chance that the actual difference or more extreme we are seeing in our sample data is just due to random variation or chance. The probability, it also is the probability of seeing a value of the test statistic that as a, is at least this consistent with HO as our test statistic, given that HO is true. So basically, what's the probability we would see this if HO is true? So in that last example, what's the chance this would happen if the eggs were actually only at 4%? So the smaller that number is, the less likely. Um, I think the alternative interpretation is where students understand it the most. Uh, so you can think of the p-value as the actual risk you would be taking of making a type 1 error if you do reject with your current evidence. So that last example is basically saying there's only a 0.22% risk. So little risk means we'll go ahead and reject. And visually, p-value is area under the curve. So it should make sense that as those areas get smaller and smaller, it's less and less likely to happen just randomly. And that's what a p-value is. Um, so when you come back, um, we'll practice the formulas, and then we'll practice more hypothesis tests. And it'll start to make more sense as we go through the chapter.